the absence of widespread bombing and killing does not mean peace. The agreement was long fought for and the principles it represents will take far longer to take root. On the 12th of July, the Loyalist Day of Days, there's a chilling reminder of how far there is to go. Few loyalists find such songs shocking. They're part of a community's culture, fashioned by long years of suffering and hate. The other side has its sectarian songs too, the legacy of a past that most hope will never return. Such songs would horrify many Protestants, but they do reflect the dark forces that three decades of political violence have unleashed. The Loyalist paramilitaries have always argued that they did what they did on behalf of and in defence of their community. Did they? Well, I believe that they did, but electorally, of course, they don't get the results. But I'm quite sure that organizations like the UDA and the UVF had a lot of sympathy in the heartland of Ulster Protestantism. And support for what they did? Protestants don't like saying that they support terrorism, and most Protestants would certainly abhor terrorism, but there would be an element who would have a sneaking regard for what the UDA and UVF were doing. It's astonishing to hear a unionist politician of such standing voice the thoughts that many Protestants may have harboured but never been prepared to admit. It's a reflection of moral ambivalence, the result of living through the darkest years of the conflict. Can you live with those people that you have tried for so many years to kill? Well, if we don't love the gather, we'll die together. Graves bear witness to the suffering loyalists have inflicted over 30 years and more. If peace falls apart, there will be a return to this dreadful past. The guns are still there. Loyalists hope the war is over, but remain ready if it is not.